Hi, my name is Comfort. Joining us today is Mr. Adewale Omoni. He's a data scientist and a statistical consultant. Join us in what is set to be an insightful and interesting interview. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. Omoni. So a little more background on Mr. Omoni. He has a degree in statistics from the University of Ilorin in Nigeria. He also has a master's in statistics from the University of Lagos, also in Nigeria. He has furthered this in the University of Lancaster in data science. He is currently pursuing his PhD in the same university. So Mr. Omoni, with all this experience, looking at the current situation in Nigeria, such as the killings and recessions, what do you think is the problem? Let me start with the ugly event that is uh, taking place in South Africa. Mm -hmm. For the past few weeks now, we've been reading news and uh, watching videos about um, how South Africans are killing other African nationals in South Africa. But we've not really seen anything, you know, talking about um, why it's happening. You see, that is a problem because uh, when things happen like this, we spend too much time, you know, talking about what happened and we pay little or no attention to why it's happening. The one thing we must understand is that without why, what has no meaning. And until we find um, why for something, we can never be able to like um, prevent an you know, official occurrence of uh, such event. You see, what would surprise you is that the reason why this happening is taking place in South Africa is the same reason why the um, Boko Haram is killing in the northern part of Nigeria. This same reason is why some people are agitating for uh, Republic of Biafra. And the same reason is why Nigeria is in recession. This reason is that um, at the moment, in Nigeria and even in the whole of Africa, we still do not recognize the importance of data when it comes to development. So what you see is that there is a disconnection between the government and the people. And um, until we start to recognize the importance of um, um, data, it's going to be very difficult to find solutions to uh, most of the problems that we're facing in Nigeria at the moment. So that we have a full understanding of what you're talking about, could you expantiate? Well, um, the level of development of any country is um, highly dependent on the amount of information the government owes about its citizen. Um, just like I, I live in the in UK and um, at the moment, uh, the government, uh, UK government knows me, knows what I do, the type of car I drive, where I live, my income, you know. And because the government owes all this information about me, it's easy for this uh, government to provide for my needs and even provide me with uh, adequate security. Like, um, you are sitting right in front of me. If I don't know you or uh, know what your needs are, then I, I can't help you. I mean, it's as simple as that. If uh, your government doesn't really know much about you or hold any information about you as a citizen, then it's always going to be very difficult for that government to, to provide for your needs. So I think uh, the uh, best way would be for the government to you know, start gathering as much information as possible about their citizens so that you know, they can help with the development of the country. So what are the ways we can collect this information? that can connect the people to the government? Well, there are so many ways by which we can um, collect this um, information um, that can connect uh, government to the people or people to the government. Um, one of it is the, or the most common one is the population census. But we know what population census is all about when it comes to Nigeria. Um, if you remember in my previous interview, I made it clear that um, Population census in Nigeria is the foundation of all forms of uh, corruption and that explains the reason why for over 50 years we've not been able to successfully conduct uh, one uh, single uh, population census and all we've been using is just like estimate uh, population figures. Another one is uh, uh, the national ID card. Uh, don't forget that in 2003 um, this national ID card scheme was introduced in Nigeria, but the program uh, failed. In fact, that would have been the best decision ever made by the Nigerian government, but you know, the program failed based on the fact that, okay, we heard that um, those appointed to 
you know, lead the program, misappropriated the funds uh, allocated for the program. But looking deep into what really happened, I think it's um, kind of more than that. There are so many, uh, uh, the program was designed to fail even from the beginning. Let me take uh, one or two examples. The appointment of the uh, head of that project, the person that was appointed to head the project, you know, did not have the uh, intellectual and uh, capability to, uh, I mean, to add such um, a very sensitive and highly technical uh, project. So the man heavily relied on the people around him to advise, and in the end, the man was misled. Um, when we're talking about national ID card, the purpose of national ID card is to provide what we call a unique identity you know, for every uh, citizen in the country. But if, when you look at the cards that was produced for some of us that uh, were fortunate enough to you know, get the, the card, there was nothing unique about that card. Another uh, mistake was that the contract was awarded to a foreign uh, company. In fact, this was a very huge mistake huge mistake in the sense that you know it's just like nigerians we we don't we still don't understand the how powerful and importance of our data because whoever holds such information can rule that country from anywhere let me start an example um look at facebook you can imagine excuse me the uh, level of influence uh facebook has in nigeria if you put anything on facebook today before you know it you of nigeria is already aware you know of that thing but one shocking thing is about Facebook is that out of the estimated 182 uh, million population you know, that we have in Nigeria, there are just 16 million people on Facebook. So the, the, the whole world is now, uh, most especially the, the Western world and the, the Asians, they are waking up to the importance of uh, data. And uh, apart from uh, using data for strategic uh, reasons, uh, data is, always, uh, is also used you know, in um, for making money and take for instance you know there are some companies that will come to you and tell you they want to offer some services uh, free of charge but you need to put in your details so that is enough to tell you that uh, that details you're putting in is more than uh, is more valuable than uh, what they probably could have uh, uh, charged you so what i'm trying to say in essence is that by awarding this uh, contract to a, a foreign uh, company mostly companies i mean uh, that knows the importance of uh, data is just like handing them um, a, a free uh, blank check. So um, it's just like N Nigeria is such a company that a country that is uh, heavily reliant on oil. United Arab Emirates used to be like Nigeria, but they decided to do something different. They went, to, I mean, they diversify and went into tourism. Today, um, oil account for just twenty percent of their GDP. So the same thing with Nigeria, we've got, there are so many things we can do. And don't forget that data is one untapped uh, wealth in Nigeria, I mean in Nigeria and in the whole of Africa. There are a lot of organizations in, in, in Nigeria that um, have huge amount of data that can, you know, you know be turned you know, into money, but they're not really making use of it. We, we have the likes of uh, we Joint Admission Matriculation Board, which is JAM. We have the West African Examination Council, WAIC. We have the National Youth uh, Service Corps. You know, all these parasitas, they, they have data in their possession, but what are they doing you know, with it? Let me take, for instance, uh, let me take, um, uh, for example, the JAM, right? Every year, JAM processes uh, an average of 1.5 million applications, and uh, they generate uh, revenue of an average of seven billion uh, naira, which you know, uh, always from sales of form. In uh, UK, there is a similar body we call UCAS. UCAS are in charge of uh, uh, UCAS is in charge of um, university and colleges uh, admission. Every year, UCAS uh, processes uh, application of about five hundred thousand. That is about one third of what Jamba processes. But uh, UCAS uh, generate an average of thirty two million pounds. If you convert that to uh, Naira, we're talking of about 18 billion. And bulk of this money is coming from uh, uh, proper and appropriate use of, uh, of data. So that is what I'm trying to talk about. That We have this information, we have this uh, data there. I mean, they're just lying there. And because we still do not understand how important, I mean, this uh, data is, you know, it's just like we're wasting resources. Last year uh, alone, 
um, Facebook generated about 26 billion US dollars. And then there's another company uh, in China called Tencent. I think they are uh, the owner of 3QQ and WeChat instant messages. This company generated about 17, uh, I think 17 billion uh, US dollars. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that there is huge amount of money, you know, in use of data. But in Africa and uh, mostly all these so-called developing countries, you see, we are not, I mean, really, we don't really attach importance to, to, to it. If I ask you now, I mean, what is the difference between uh, uh, developing and developed nations? Let, let's take Nigeria and UK for, as an example. You'll be talking about infrastructure development and stuff like that. But uh, you see, as a data scientist, I will tell you the difference between this country, I mean, those two countries, are the amount of information each of these, uh, each of these uh, government owes and about these uh, citizens. So why do you think the level of corruption is so high in Nigeria? Well, I think um, that one is uh, pretty um, obvious. Because in Nigeria, we, we have a system that um, encourages and promotes corruption. And um, we even have a society that celebrates and worships uh, corrupt leaders. You know, that, that is what I've been talking about, because on, until we we'll build that system, you know, that, that we, uh, I mean, make it very difficult for people to steal. Because what is happening in Nigeria at the moment is that the present administration is running after corrupt leaders. But to me, what they are doing is that they are running after thieves, but uh, they, they, they leave their uh, property uh, unsecured. So what we have is a system you know, that a lot, see, uh, an average individual is likely going to be corrupt if the, you give them the chance. But if you live in a society where it's going to be very difficult for you to, you know, to steal, you know, then definitely he, he, the level of corruption will automatically reduce. I'm talking about the society itself. You know, just last year I was watching um, a, a video, um, I think that went viral about um, a boy that was born to death just because he stole bread. You know, and in that same society, we have people that sold billions still walking around freely, and we keep on celebrating, giving them uh, chieftaincy titles, and you know, it, that, that is you know like a sick society. Mm -hmm. And if only the society and the system can be corrected, then um, the level of corruption will automatically die down. So one last question before we go: What advice do you have for the current government that will help them to achieve this? Well, um, I think if we are talking about uh, proper um, use of data, then I think the first thing is that we need experts in that, in that field. Um, uh, I think it starts from um, um, changing the uh, structure of our education because at the moment there is no uh, university in Nigeria and even in the whole of Africa you know, that is offering uh, data science as a course. You know, this has to be introduced. You know, the Chinese, they did something that I, I love so much, you know, because every, people are talking about the economy of Chinese, but, you know, they're not really talking about how they, you know, would manage to get there. If you go to any of the top 10 universities, you know, in the UK or in the US, you find more than 30%, you know, of their students being uh, from, from uh, China. And that is uh, one thing we need to do, you know, apart from restructuring our education uh, system, we must recognize the importance of Western education. That is really very important. You cannot compete. I keep on saying this. You cannot compete with somebody if you don't have what that person has. You know, we need that Western education. At the moment, there are about 18,000 um, uh, Nigerian students in the UK. At the end of the day, nobody wants to go home. You know, they don't want to go home because, you know, the, the government we have, you know, doesn't really encourage, you know, um, I mean, there is no encouragement, you know, for them to come back home and, you know, put into practice what they are learning here, you know. The, the, the gap between our educational system and that of the Western world is just too wide. And until we, you know, decide to, like, uh, close this gap, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for us. So, as I said, there are so many things we can do. It's not just, like, um, something I can sit down here and say, Okay, this is what we need to do, but it starts from that. Uh, uh, that that uh, start from um, uh, bringing in experts, you know, because.
this we are talking about you see when we're talking about data we're talking about something that is very very sensitive mm -hmm. if you go to, i mean go to china uh, uk us there's one thing they don't really joke with the uh, their database they can never allow a foreign person you know to have access to that because that is the strength of any nation mm -hmm. you understand so for you to build that we must you know try to like train our people you know bring in experts you know in that field and you know like create a very suitable environment for them to to get this done so that is my advice for the for the government thank you mr money for having us and for shedding more light on the use of data and its importance in developing the country yeah, you're welcome. well I'm sure it's been an insightful interview and I hope the people and the government of Nigeria ponder upon this to create a better and safer Nigeria for all. Thank you for staying with us.